extremely unhappy occasion, I would like to ask for your cooperation. Our webinar session is about to begin, and please, if possible, please uh, enjoy. Please put out a lot of comments, and uh, I will explain about our virtual talk today. Before we start our virtual talk, I would like to explain quickly about how our session will operate today. Our participants today could ask questions in the comment section to our speaker. And just a reminder, everyone please use the Malaysia and English throughout the program. for being here with us today. Without further ado, I'm sure all of you cannot wait to get to know our speaker better. And with that, uh, please welcome Dr. Rosanna Muhammad Syed while I read a little bit, a brief description about herself. Dr. Rosanna is a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Health Science teaching and pathophysiology for health science at experience academic and administrative at the faculty and university level and currently holding a position as an East Exchange Student Program Coordinator. Absolutely inspiring. Thank you so much, Dr. for being here with us today. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rosanna, how are you? Good. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for this invitation. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, are we to go, to go right. now? Doctor, before we proceed, uh, allow me. Allow me to explain. Ah, yeah, yeah, we're good to go. But before we proceed, I would like to explain a little bit about uh, what is this program and what are we going, what is our expectation for doing such program. Is that okay? Yep. It's okay with me. Go on. All right. Thank you with me. All right, the reason why we organize this program today is to share to the students on whether it is possible to go abroad while being, in a, being a UITM student. What are the chances and what is the right process to apply? The students have so many questions and we are here for today to satisfy their curiosity. Well then, uh, a little bit about the program. I just want to proceed with the real agenda. I would like to invite again Dr. Razana Muhammad Said. Please enlighten us about the opportunities to go abroad while studying in UITM. Silakan, Doctor. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Moderator Auni. Okay, this is, um, I really take this opportunity to share uh, what we have done so far at our office. Um, but before that, I'd like to wish you uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and very good morning to whoever is present for today's session. I'm very glad to be invited for this session because I always feel that I need to reach out to students all over UITM system so that they get to know uh, their chances. What are their chances of going overseas or going abroad while they're still studying in, in UITM? Okay, so basically, uh, I'm answering your request or I'm actually fulfilling your request in that sense. And um, 
I think I'd like to start uh, my presentation actually with um, an introduction to uh, to uh, our office. Okay, so um, yeah, I am the coordinator who is currently um, managing or handling uh, things to do with all mobility programs. So because currently. Uh, I'm supposed to only look at exchange program, uh, but I'm also currently looking for all other mobility programs. So let's go through this one by one. As I mentioned that I need to introduce UITM Global. That's our office right now. Previously, people know us as um, Office of International Affairs. Um, I am going to talk more about it later, but this is the agenda basically to go through uh, introduce you to UITM Global, then I like to highlight on the importance of student mobility activity to UITM and also to individual students, okay? And what are the activities and how to apply and does UITM provide services for alumni to go overseas, okay? So these are the points that I'm going to cover uh, today. Now, as an introduction, as I mentioned much earlier, that our office uh, was known as Office of International Affairs previously. But now, we are known as UITM Global. The reason being that, okay, uh, there are two more departments set up under our wing right now. Uh, previously, we have uh, Office of International Affairs. Now, it has become Department of International Affairs, uh, which main function is to manage the not only managing the inbound and outbound student activities uh, but we are managing everything to do with uh, international affairs be it for staff or students visitors everything to do with international affairs um, we our department is the one that manage them and then we are uh, joined by department of ranking so this is where you find, uh, maybe you are fully aware that even at our website, we always have um, information regarding a ranking UITM. Where are we when we compare with uh, other universities all over the world? And we are not only looking at university per se, we are also looking at faculties, courses, you know, uh, that will be ranked against other universities. So far, we have the We've done so well. What I have put here is just an example uh, because you know that it is uh, from 2011, but now 2022, we have risen so far. Uh, not that far because uh, we do have um, challenges. Like for example, we do not have that many um, foreigners in our university. We do not, uh, we do not have that many um international students and international staff so this can be one of the things that uh, being looked at for ranking purpose uh, and i think we lose on that part but we're working on other aspects that we can improve you know so we are not uh, we are still in competition we are still there and we're still very very relevant and the third department in our office or in uh, in UITM global is known as department of strategic partnerships and this department is uh, responsible in initiating a partnership with the top 300 universities of the world so it's not easy it's pretty tough uh, because usually uh, top universities, they would rather be with, um, you know, with other top universities. Uh, so it is not really that easy, but we're doing it, you know. Okay, uh, this is the organizational chart. Uh, it's all one. Um, I, I believe we do not have the, the, the full the latest version but basically that's how this is how it looks like our um, assistant vice chancellor is no longer prof chemistry dr hadaria now is actually uh, prof dr shariman zainal abidin um okay currently the in under the department of strategic partnerships uh, um we, we are not sure about the position of Prof. Dr. Ahmad Nakiuddin, but he was the person who hated. 
um, we have a couple of coordinators and heads. You can see here heads, okay, and also coordinators. Uh, uh, my office is basically, as mentioned, is under Department of International Affairs. You can see how huge we are because we handle everything to do with international affairs. And we are still lack of uh, staff. If you can see here the coordinator, uh, currently we have one coordinator under communication and internationalization. Yeah, but um, uh, for international students and development, which uh, is the unit uh, responsible to handle everything to do with students, inbound, outbound uh, uh, students activities, um, it's here, as you can see, I hope you can see uh, I'm moving my uh, cursor there and here I am, okay, looking under, uh, looking after the student exchange. But as I said, because the position here, coordinator for summer program or shorter program, yeah, shorter sh uh, term program is still not available. So I'm handling both, yeah, being a coordinator, coordinating mobility program, basically, yeah, students mobility program. So where are we located? I know you guys are uh, in the north region, but maybe one of these days you may come down here to Shah Alam for certain uh, activities perhaps, or maybe just want to go to our center. So basically, uh, if you are quite familiar or perhaps you are not familiar, but many of you not necessarily are actually uh, from the northern part of uh, the peninsula, but I do believe that many of you actually comes uh, from Johor, maybe yeah, from Kelantan and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you may be, as I said again, once in a while, probably you are here at our campus. Uh, so where are we? We are here. Uh, if you are familiar, uh, we have many uh, many entrance uh, at UITM Shah Alam. Uh, the major one would be one, which is at section two. Uh, that's the main entrance. And we have the second entrance at section seven or facing section seven, um, and um, which is very near to shopping, shopping areas, basically, at section seven. And our office is just across... Um, Academy Pusat Bahasa APB um, and we are like as you enter through the second gate you know immediately to the left um, exit the roundabout immediately to the left the first left uh, route going out from the uh, from the roundabout so we are there before this uh, the place is known as innovation center but now it is known as Complex Antarabangsa. Yeah? Uh, that is also where you can find Bahagian Pengambilan Pelajar. Yeah? We are uh, in the same building, uh, but we uh, occupy <coughs> the first level, yeah, the first level of the Complex Antarabangsa. So what do we do? Okay, basically our office, as I said again, everything to do with international affairs are uh, under our sleeve. Okay, so we actually lies um, uh, lies between UIT and partner university, lies between faculty and partner university. So we are opening doors for everyone at UITM to have some connections with other partners or other universities or other institutions uh, all over the world. Okay, so we get you get uh, we get you connected. Uh, but the activities that connect you or connect everyone uh, with uh, their partners are through uh, here we have a memorandum of understanding or memorandum of agreement. Uh, then we have the letter of understanding, letter of intent and letter of uh, agreement basically. Uh, these are all managed by us. Um, we are not really doing the uh, you know, uh, engaging uh, the actual MOU or MOA is actually by the university, but the effort, the initiate or the host of each of these uh, documents uh, by faculties or by uh, campuses. Yeah. Uh, so we have got many. You can check on this uh, at our website, UITM Global website. Uh, we have like 600 plus uh, documents, yeah, connections all over the world. Okay. 
uh, we activate, uh, we help faculties and campuses to activate internationalization. And we make sure that all these uh, documents, MOU, MOA, and so on and so forth, uh, they are not just being static there. It's not just for a record to say that we have got such and such number of MOA or MOU and so on and so forth. But we are also uh, encouraging every uh, faculties and campuses to take active uh, participation uh, and ensuring that uh, these activities continue. Okay. And yeah, the toughest is actually um, to manage and monitor the connections. Because if you have got like, for example, in Kedah, if the campus of Kedah has got, say, uh, probably 20 uh, connections, yeah, uh, 20 MOUs and uh, accumulation of MOU, MOE, and so on and so forth. So uh, UITM Kedah has to ensure that activities are done uh, accordingly. And we monitor and we make reports yeah, to the um, uh, to the executive level, uh, to KPT, uh, yeah, Ministry of Higher Education. So we do reports, we monitor uh, and we manage yeah, all these activities uh, that involve um, internationalization. Now, how do we keep connections? Yeah. Um, these are among the things that um, probably you have heard as well occurring or happening at your campus. Yeah, you get visitors. Yeah, the visitors can be uh, in the form of uh, professors, uh, maybe even um, students. Okay, um, so basically we have visitors from overseas, and we this is among the things or activities. Uh, that we do. We collaborate now. Uh, collaboration in research, grant, uh, grant acquisition, publication and lectures. Um, we are only monitoring or we are only collecting the data, but all activities are done by uh, the faculty and campuses. Yeah. Uh, we collaborate in mobility activities. So here mobility activities is really uh, through our office, basically. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> And we lobby. How do we lobby? We send information to universities, uh, of, to our partners, to uh, request them to work with us, to send their students with us, to do program with us, and so on and so forth. So we do some lobbying. Uh, norm, um, in the past two years, there are a lot of activities of lobbying uh, which are done um, online. Yeah, We have got like so many online meetings and online lobbying, okay? And we organize meetings and events with international partners, okay? All right, so mobility activity at UITM, why? Why do we need to do it? So this is the importance that you, all of us, yeah, not just lecturers, not just administrators, not just staff, but students also need to know. One of the things that uh, we are doing internationalization is for ranking purposes. We want to put ourselves to um, measure ourselves against other universities. How good uh, are we? And then uh, UITM has an initiative known as Global Renowned University by 2025. So that's a target that we have to achieve. So we need to be very active in doing this. And who who are involved in mobility activity. Basically, everyone can be involved, whether you are a student or you are an academic or administrative staff. Yeah. And what type of activities? So there are a number of activities. Um, what I have put here are basically involving the students. Yeah. But for staff, um, they, they have like work shadowing, like for administrative staff, they can actually request uh, to go, for example, to University of Sukuba uh, and just to learn to be put there uh, like an internship. But internship means that you haven't got a job yet. But here you have got a post already, but you just go to uh, our partner university and experience the way things are done or basically work in short term with the, at the partner university's office. Uh, for staff, academic staff, a lot of activities 
ya yeah, uh, research publication uh, lectures and so on so forth how how do we get involved with the mobility activities um, i'll talk about this more but anyway uh, the thing is in short that you have to identify the university uh, you've got to find out all the necessary information then you need to discuss with your faculty or yeah faculty or maybe in your case you have got the head of course uh, head of programs or maybe even you have a coordinator uh, or maybe your advisor you have to discuss about what you want to do uh, then next step is you cannot actually uh, nominate yourself uh, for exchange program especially yeah uh, as uh, that uh, your name must come from us, from our office, from Department of International Affairs, and we call that as nomination. Therefore, uh, campus or faculties needs to write to us to let us know that such and such students have been selected uh, to go to whichever university to do what activity. Okay, and. To support you, we have some funds, yeah, you know, some funds that you can use and you can apply and use. So I'm going to talk about it more. And of course, after everything has gone through, uh, you just go to that particular partner university or the host university and enjoy the program. Okay, right. So am I clear so far about all this thing? Is, is there any question? You can just stop me anytime. Um, and I will help answer your curiosity. So we are now going into the second session. The first session, as I mentioned, is just an introduction. Now we go to the student mobility. Because as I said again, I'm largely involved with student activities. So what is a student mobility? You may have heard about it. But let me just reiterate it. Yeah, global student mobility. I just, I'm just going to read this. Yeah, global student mobility or outward global mobility is a term used to describe participation of students in overseas placement, uh, studies, or uh, voluntary. Therefore, volunteerism is also part of mobility program. It is something that is strongly associated with positive benefits for students in relation to personal development and career opportunities. So you see here, positive benefits. You want to gain some, uh, there, there are benefits for you in joining this uh, student mobility activities. Yeah, It helps to build personal development like uh, the soft skills, yeah, uh, leadership skills, communication skills, or whatever skills, even critical thinking skills, yeah, it's it can be developed by uh, engaging yourself in student mobility activities, and career wise, you want to get a job, you already have this, uh, you know, you you, you receive um, certificates or awards maybe while you are joining a certain activities uh, because you are actively participating and, and you're good in the activities you may be award as the best presenter uh, the best participant or what whatever it is yeah you may have got some award and that can be included in your portfolio and that can be used for you getting a good job. Yeah, a good job. <clears throat> uh, you know, you, you must understand that nowadays employers are not really seeking for, um, you know, for uh, excellence in terms of academic. Not only that, they prefer people who have other abilities or have better skills like maybe teamwork skills or critical thinking communication you know uh, and the rest there are like you can name many uh, human skills that we need um, and that can like i said uh, you can help gain build by engaging yourself in activities such as student mobility activities um, you can have activities, student activities internally, yeah, within uh, UITM itself. Yeah, you can also build um, 
communication skills, uh, leadership skills, teamwork skills within UITM. But UITM aspires to have students who are also capable to go global. You know, uh, you will find if any one of you have gone through a process of international student mobility activity, or you have not maybe, but you have watched, you have heard from friends, okay, you will notice that there's slight different in their attitude when they come back, yeah, because they're exposed to uh, various cultures, they have to, uh, you know, uh, be as human as they, they they can because you have to understand other people yeah when you are within your our our uh when you are within um our own culture we're so familiar with it uh, uh that you know um probably we we don't learn as much but when we're exposed to various cultures uh, you probably have to change your attitude from a shy person from introvert to become extrovert uh, to have a better understanding uh, with empathy and so on and so forth. So I have a, a number of slides more <coughs> to just indicate to you uh, why student mobility uh, is beneficial. So here we have uh, creating global citizens. Yeah. Uh, so that you can understand the real world implications, uh, having new experience, yeah, and hone on your skills, yeah, human skills. You may have learned, uh, you may have got the chance to learn hands on on certain active, uh, certain skills, yeah. Uh, of course, honing on your leadership and teamwork, teamwork, yeah. Uh, adaptability, you have to adapt yourself. Like for example, people are so scared to go. For example, this is real, yeah. Um, students usually are happy to go to, like, for example, to Korea, to Japan, the UK, to US, and uh, other countries. But they are not keen to go to India, for example, or even keen to go to neighboring uh, Asian countries like Thailand or Philippines or uh, Yangon and and so on. You know, you you are not keen to go there, yeah, because you feel of the joy and the fun if you go to korea because you are a korea fan you are a k-pop fan uh you just want to go there because you see a lot on uh, about this uh in, in in tv series in movies yeah but rarely do you probably watch uh, a thai movie or maybe even uh what uh, vietnamese movie um not even Singapore, perhaps, or Indonesian, yeah? So therefore, you are lack of knowledge of that country, and so you have a, a, a perception, a different perception, that you feel that these countries, our neighbours, are not as good as it is with Korea and those countries that you know very much developed countries, yeah? Uh, but you see, the thing about this is that you just want to gain, gain experience because not everyone can go to Korea. Not everyone can go to Japan because it involves a lot of costs. Yeah. So the point is, even if you just go to Thailand, Thailand isn't that far from you. It's a border to you, right? Um, it's still an experience and it is still overseas. It is still abroad, moving abroad or experience is something new. The culture is new. You have to adapt. Maybe it's not easy for you to get food. Halal food is not easy, perhaps, which is, uh, I doubt it, yeah, in Thailand, you get you can easily get halal food. But maybe uh, if you go to India, you may not be able to get halal food that easy. So you adapt to the situation. Yeah, Instead of buying, maybe you want to, you know, try and cook yourself uh, food. Uh, maybe you just eat bread. <laughs> uh, that's what happened when, uh, you know, in some places you just can't help yourself. You are scared of eating something which served to you because you're not sure of it's being halal. So you hope to something which is, you know, uh, not not going into food that you really like, but you just have to resort to something which is cheaper, which is like, you know, like perhaps bread isn't, 
you know, uh, is 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 not considered to be non halal. It is halal, but you know, you've got to experience it. You know, you've got to experience it. Yeah, language and communication communication skills. It is good if you can actually learn new language. You know, in Malaysia, I personally feel that I only knew English and Malay. Yeah, which is ah, it's it's actually something. Uh, my weakness actually. Yeah, I should have learned another language. This is what UITM has given you, uh, to learn a third language. Yeah, a third language because it's uh, it it should be beneficial to you. It should be uh, giving you a competitive edge when you go for a job which is competitive. Yeah, because having to know a different language. So you can learn different languages from your involvement with student mobility. You may be there for about four months and you must have picked up some conversational language uh, of the of the country. Yeah. Uh, so and then you build your communication skills because let's say, for example, you don't communicate well in English. So you go to, for example, you go where? Maybe you go to the to the US, yeah, to the US because that's English speaking countries. Okay, so initially you will feel a, sh uh, a, a little bit shy, you know, to ask questions. But because you want to survive, somehow you learn to better yourself in your language, English speaking skill. Yeah, so that's. Um, that can only be experienced, you know, when you are exposed in uh, at different countries and different culture. If you are staying here, yes, you can still learn your language, but perhaps you are so comfortable with it that you can just, you know, uh, break all the rules. Um, you can just speak in, uh, you know, what we call it as Manglish. You can mix the language Malay and English and you don't care because you feel that everyone understands you but when you are in in the uk in the us you speak that way perhaps not many people or maybe all of them are not able to understand so it helps to build your communication skills yeah understanding the global market when you go somewhere else you can see the economy for example how do the people at the country survive uh, what are their main activities and so on and so forth so that helps to build and reach your social life yeah personal development other things other things yeah name anything and all that can help your personal development so this is the benefits among the benefits of engaging in student mobility okay so that's about why student mobility is so encouraged yeah to uitm students especially yep and uh, we want you to go to be global citizen and yeah, you want to have uitm students to to build uh uitm students to become global citizen if you are just staying put here in malaysia you may not uh you know i i can't say you can't be global citizens because nowadays you can learn everything from the internet but the actual experience is worth is what everybody should try as much as possible to get involved with the actual experience being somewhere yeah it's not the same i mean some of you perhaps are coming from uh, you come from a good family uh, that you uh, that you have the chance to have holidays overseas um, at least once a year but many of us at uitm uh is not as um lucky you know uh and therefore one of the things that these people yeah uh people who has lack of money for example yeah uh, take the opportunity offered by uitm by getting involved with student mobility international student mobility activities okay so it is an initiative when i joined uh at that time was uh, office of international affairs that's when i heard about one student one passport yeah one student one passport global citizens and i realized that this initiative of one student one passport is just not at uitm it seems that even the indonesian some of the indonesian uh, universities are also adopting 
uh, this initiative, yeah, one student, one passport. Okay, uh, to other universities in Malaysia as well. Uh, we want at UITM, uh, what we want to be able to do is to send as many students, as many students to experience global learning. Yeah, uh, of course, in the past two years when it's MCOs, right? Uh, we still we are still active doing this by encouraging students to go for online learning and yeah, for online learning and you get exposures uh, from the programs as well because you are actually uh, you know together with um, different races different nationalities only it is it is not physical it is uh, through the internet it is actually online yeah but not to worry as much you still gain something and yeah, you still gain something out of it because as i said not everyone can go in uitm we have what close to 192000 population students population 190000 that's a lot right that's a lot and we have some fun you can see here there are funding right we do have fun and we call it as dana mobility plaza uitm and this fun is actually coming from uh try and find the word here uh, oh I, I lost the word i'm so sorry but uh, basically uh, it's a fun created uh from donations from alumni uitm alumni from uh, uitm staff uh, from corporate sectors uh, that actually gave money to us yeah uh, and it's put into uh, a, 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 a fund tabung, eh? um, into a fund and which then being um, you know uh, allocated to different activities in UITM to support internationalization to support research and what so on and so forth so we do have dana mobility plaza UITM but the amount is not huge Okay, it's not that huge, yeah. Um, let's say we have about a million ringgit, yeah, a million ringgit in the Dana Mobility Plaza UITM, but we have 190,000 students, yeah, from diploma to degree to postgraduates. Fortunately, the, this Dana Mobility Plaza UITM is not to be used by the postgraduate students. So it is solely for the a diploma and the uh, bachelor degree students so we are lucky in that sense so if we minus um with the postgraduate students probably from 190,000 approximate yeah the latest count of student numbers about 190,000 you just minus about 220,000 uh, sorry uh, not even 20,000 about few thousands only postgraduate students in Malaysia probably say about 10,000 right and we still have 180,000 students that we need to support. Therefore, not everyone is able to use this, uh, this, this tabung, you know? Uh, so it's very competitive. And there are also conditions in order for you to use this. So I'm telling you this so that you will work hard and you, uh, you, you put in your heart. If you are in your first semester or second semester, you still have like uh, four semester, semesters more to go for you to apply to go and join uh, international mobility activities, you know, uh, and you can apply for the DANA. Yeah, but I will explain more about the DANA. Let me just check uh, if, let's see. Yeah, I will, I will tell you more about the DANA anyway. Now, in order for you to apply, you must be an active student in the system. I mean, you must not take, say, for example, uh, some leave, you know. Uh, you are allowed to take some leave while you are studying, right, because of reason of health and whatnot. Mm, but you must be an active student. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you are either a diploma holder uh, or uh, pursuing diploma or bachelor degree, uh, you can apply. Yeah, to go for student mobility. If you are postgraduates, you can still do so. Uh, we do have exchange for postgraduate students. We do receive 
postgraduate exchange students uh, but um, for our students uh, postgraduates to go overseas using the uh, uh, exchange uh, uh, opportunity unfortunately it's not supported by uh, the dana mobility plaza so either the students uh, have to use grant from the lecturers consent from their supervisors or the faculty uh, the institute of graduate studies uh, support them or uh, they have their own fund so they, they're not being supported yeah but they can go for student mobility activities the criteria yeah now that we're talking about the diploma and bachelor degree students in order for it to apply and use Dana Mobility Plaza. Remember this to use Dana Mobility Plaza, yeah? You have to have a CDPA of more than 3.0 for credit transfer program. Yeah, for credit transfer program. So this credit transfer program uh, is exchange program uh, or it can be also internship uh, program research attachment you know these are the sort of programs under the credit transfer program you have got to have a cpa of more than 3.0 but for all other non-credited programs summer programs any anything that is not uh, exchange uh, and, uh, or categorized under exchange program uh, then you if your cpa is a minimum of 2.5 you can go you can apply to use the fund okay so that means what does this mean this means that we are doing our best to get students to go overseas yeah for a short stay of course yeah not for a long duration stay but a short stay but even when it is short it can be uh, uh, a few weeks yeah uh, and for the credit transfer it can be up to a year it can be up to a year but the pro the process are pretty tedious actually funding yeah uh, we have got as mentioned dana mobility plaza belonging uh, uh, it's a, a fund yeah uh, at uitm level we also have uh, what's known as asian international mobility for students or aims these funds are actually given to us uh, by uh, the ministry of higher education however uh, the areas of studies this is only for exchange students this fund the aims fund is only for exchange purposes not for others yeah and uh, uh, there's no limit uh, there's a ceiling yeah there's a ceiling uh, for the the fund uh, uh, similarly with dana mobility plaza there's a ceiling as well yeah now you can also get sponsored by the host university i'll explain more to this later and there are others like if you can if your parents can afford uh surely you you you, you can apply and you can go yeah without using the dana mobility plaza okay any questions so far on that or you want me to finish everything and then you start asking questions is that okay with that yeah okay Right, next one is where to go. If you're wondering like, where will I go? Because I always receive uh, emails from students who ask, uh, who told me that uh, they're interested to go for an exchange program or any mobility program, but they need advice on where to go. How do I go about it? Yeah. Now, the things that I really want you to do is this. You decide where you want to go, basically. Yeah, anywhere in this world, as long as the university uh, has, uh, 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 actually, yeah, are actually our partners. So where do you go to check on this? Yeah, you can check on our website, uh, UITM Global website. From there, there's a map that shows you which universities, which countries. So if you decide, for example, many of you aspiring to go to the UK, for example, yeah, uh, you can go to European, some European countries as well, yeah. So you go, say, for example, you want to go to France and you can check whether or not we have any agreement, any memorandum of understanding with uh, France. You can go there. You want to go to China, for example, there's a lot of opportunities to go to China. China is opening door to many of us. 
uh, all over the world. They are actually inviting people from all over the world, right? Uh, you can also go there. You can check. So basically, what you need to do is go check at uh, this website, UITM Global Websites, and find the country that you want to go, and then find the university that you want to go to. Now, this, through these activities, yeah, uh, when the university, the partner universities, the one that is listed in the website, at our website, these are basically universities that have got uh, or they are partners to us and they have at least memorandum of understanding. With that memorandum of understanding, when you go there, you don't have to pay their tuition. That means, let's say you go to Chula Longkorn University, uh, you don't pay tuition to Chula Longkorn University. But does that mean that you don't pay tuition at all for that semester that you are away? No, you still have to pay, but you are paying to UITM. So let's say, for example, at UITM, you're paying 500 Malaysian ringgit yeah, for your tuition per semester. And then if we compare to go, uh, we compare with uh, Chula Longkorn University, uh, the, the, the cost is higher, probably up to a few thousands. So that means uh, it, it benefits us in that way, you know, it benefits us because you're only paying a, a, a little money yeah, to get that experience okay so again i want to repeat this part that you're not paying tuition fees to the host university but you still need to pay tuition fee for that semester but you pay it to uitm okay now you go to some uh, many of these universities i found out nowadays because of inflation i guess yeah uh, that many universities they are no longer afford, uh, offering accommodation now especially in countries such as the us japan uh, even korea now yeah uh, all countries basically yeah they do not offer free accommodation so accommodation needs to be paid and it's expensive okay, it's very expensive uh, let me share with you this yeah one student um she is so determined she has got this chance i mean everyone has got the chance right so uh it it happened was it last last year uh, last semester i think it was last last year yeah and she's a b40 student okay but she really wants to go to a, this university in the us because we have an mou with the us and uh, this particular university is actually offering uh, uh exchange program to us so this student uh, being a b40 she doesn't have that much money and then for us she, of course she applied for the dana mobility plaza but as i said again there is ceiling or the maximum amount that uitm can give yeah now if you're asking me like why should they be a maximum amount remember UITM has got so many students and UITM wants to support as many as possible students to be able to have global experience. So anyhow, for this particular student, she needs to pay. Uh, this is relating to accommodation fees. Yeah, relating to accommodation fees. Now, the student needs to you know, have to be... She was, she was actually at this particular university for four months. And you know how much she needs to spend for accommodation? 18,000 Malaysian ringgit for that four months. It's expensive, isn't it? Even more expensive now because ringgit Malaysia to USD is cheaper. It's expensive, sorry. It's, it's, it, USD is expensive. You know, we are buying USD. It's very expensive right now. It's almost like one USD equivalent to four point, nearly five ringgit already. I think probably at least 4.6 uh, Malaysian ringgit for one for every one USD. So it's very expensive, you know. So this is what I'm telling you. If you want to go overseas, you want to go as far uh, away as you like. Yes, you can, but you have to have some money as well. Because your item is not going to give you all expenditures, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, okay, but anyhow, the student survived there for four months. Alhamdulillah, she's back here. And I do believe uh, that she learned a lot. Yeah. 
Um, and it's, it's just on accommodation. What about others? What about food, cars? What about transport? So, this uh, most of this have to be borne by you. It have to be borne by you. So choose wisely. When you decide to go somewhere, choose wisely. If you know that your parents cannot afford, yeah, to provide you with much money, okay, then choose somewhere which is nearer to Malaysia. Remember, the point is to have a global experience. Even when you go to Indonesia, you think that Indonesia is similar to us, but you may face you may face challenges over there. Yeah, if you go to university, uh, let's say where, um, probably, I'm not, I'm not sure if there is a university in, 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 in Bali. Yeah, in Bali, I've not been there as well. Yeah, but what I have heard is that it's not easy for you to get uh, halal food uh, in Bali itself. Right? So choose wisely. You decide where to go, but choose wisely. Look at yourself. Yeah. Look at yourself. If you are able to talk with your parents, okay? You can talk with your parents about the benefits and so on and so forth. But might understand them as well. If they do not have that much money to support you, then choose Thailand. Choose Vietnam. Choose uh, Singapore is expensive. Brunei is expensive, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But choose other countries. You can go to India as well. Yeah, in the, India is opening doors to us, but none of our students go to India simply because you think, ah, India, you know. <laughs> but do you know that India, the technology in India is greater than us? Yeah, we are, they can post on their technology actually compared to us. We are using technology from other countries, but they develop their own technology, you know. Okay, now if you if your purpose is to gain some global uh, global experience, then choose a cheaper and nearby country. That's it. Yeah. But like I said again, if Singapore and, and Brunei is expensive, so choose other countries. Okay. You can go to Arab, uh, Saudi Arabia. The uh, number of universities that we have linkages linkage with. Yeah. Uh, you can go to a few African countries as well if you like. Okay. What do you need to do when you have decided which university you want to go? Okay, you need to check on your study plan. So therefore, it is actually good if you are from the very first semester, if you are a student uh, in your first semester or maybe first year at UITM. I think this is good for you because you can start planning because you have like another uh, in, in, in some programs it is a four-year program in some it is a three-year program i can understand that but say for example you've been in your itm system for one semester you can now plan you can now plan yourself here to get involved with say for example an exchange program because that's where you stay longer at the in in the host university uh, university and country but of course, if you cannot, then you go for a shorter program, a summer program. Some summer programs like leadership program, we encourage students to go to such program. You can apply as well. Yeah. Um, so you need to check on your study plan. Why is it so? Because you need to make sure that you get um, credit transfer. You cannot spend... Say, for example, you spend about 15,000 Malaysian ringgit to go to Korea and then you come back and you, then you don't get credit transfer. We are not happy. We know this happened, but we are not happy. Yeah, the faculty, you, needs to be responsible. So there is a need for you to negotiate. There is a need for you to uh, plan well on where to go, when to go, how to go. You've got to talk with the faculty. You've got to talk with your academic advisor. You've got to go uh, to talk with the uh, head of department or head of program. You have to talk with the liaison officer. Right now, uh, I think the liaison officer in Kedah, is it you, uh, Puan Irma? I think it is different person the last time that I know. If it is Puan Irma, you can talk with Puan Irma, of course. Yeah. Check on eligibility. Some universities state clearly 
uh, what kind of students do they want. Uh, they can be very specific, uh, like they need uh, English, uh, um, uh, English skill of high credibility. Like uh, some will state, for example, IELTS of 6.5 at least, a minimum of 6.5. Some, some states, uh, um, uh, uh, not IELTS, but uh, TOEFL, TOEFL score of say uh, 600 yeah um and so on and so forth so there are various uh, language uh, uh, skills that that they can uh, they can request from you so you have to check on this eligibility uh there are other as well other others uh, other conditions uh, as well so you need to check from their website and decide when and where you want to go yeah i mentioned this a few times already uh, I also mentioned to you that you have to talk with the faculty and you need to get their support. You need to get their support. Why? Because you need them to give you the credit transfer. Yeah, they, you need them to give you a credit transfer. How much, um, how many credit transfer? If you're asking me how many credit transfer. Now, in a semester, we have to have at least a 12 credit, right? at least a 12 credit, credit to enable you if you uh, to enable you to get anugrah dekan or uh, anugrah naib chancellor or something like that yeah uh, you have to have at least a minimum uh, a minimum of a 12 credit if i'm not missing you got to check with your uh, faculty uh, yeah basically your faculty uh, or the academic affairs uh, at the campus yeah you got to check on that one and that's why, you know, uh, if you go for internship, internship is about 12 credits, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then uh, you, you you can go and you come back and you can still get uh, Anugrana Chancellor or Dean's List and so on. Okay. But again, as I said, please do check. Talk. Plan. You are in one in your first semester now, for example plan that you want to go in your third semester for example because you've got to check on the courses yeah now um probably you can you can write to the particular university you know write directly to them and ask uh do they offer these courses a uh, similar courses for example in which semester you may you may be able to get that information yeah, just to find out. Yeah, you can tell them that you plan to do, uh, to go for an exchange program with the university, but you need to check on the credits offered by the university so that you can get credit transfer. You can actually write directly to find out, but not to apply. Yeah, but not to apply because many universities, um. They don't want students to deal, they don't want to direct deal with students. They prefer to deal with university. So it has to come from the international office. That's why I said earlier that you need to be nominated by your faculty. But before you get to be nominated, you have to do all these things. Seriously, you have to go through this thing. Now, another is you can do uh, research internship uh, at your last semester yeah but uh, um, I think the last that I heard from the committee is that if you are doing uh, if you are in your final semester uh, the chance for you to go uh, for an exchange program is slim slim yeah uh, we prefer for students to go uh, while they are in between first semester uh, sorry second semester to the probably fifth semester yeah because why why can't you go in the first semester of course you just get into uitm how can you go yeah uh we need to have your cgpa value somehow so you need to go for your second semester where you already have your uh, CGPA value. Now, for we, uh, we we don't encourage students to go in their final semester because um, 
yeah, why the, the reason for not allowing students for the final semester is that we're worried that if such so should you fail, and should you fail, or maybe you don't want to come back or something like that. You know, you need to come back. You need to come back first. Okay. Uh, the thing about going overseas, you know, uh, doing your exchange there, you actually create connections with the university, the host university, create connections with your would-be supervisor, potential supervisor. Yeah. Uh, you also create opportunity for friendships, certainly. The connections with uh, students from that particular university and that country. Okay. Which program to go again uh, for exchange program of to use Dana Mobility? Yeah, uh, th there is no written uh, statement actually. There is no written statement to say that uh, you cannot apply for Dana Mobility if you are doing programs other than the credit transfer program. Yeah. Uh, but we will support fully. Yes, support fully means we will definitely say that you can go for this program yeah, if you are engaging in credit transfer program or research attachment or internship. Summer programs, yes, but the faculty needs to work with us. If, say, the summer programs are advertised through our office, then you can go for the program. But if it is like you found the program, then that program needs to be told. You need to talk with us at uh, UITM Global or at a Department of International Affairs. Uh, you, we, we have to discuss about it we, because we need to uh, we need to evaluate the program. We need to see the benefits of the program. Some summer programs are very expensive. They can run up into 3,000 USD, you know, for just two weeks uh, period. Yeah, it's very expensive. 3,000 USD is equivalent to 12, almost 15,000. Am I right about it? If you are considering one USD is equivalent to four, uh, then 3,000 is 12,000, but it's not 4, it's 4 plus plus. So it's almost come to 15,000. So because of that, because it's very costly, we need to really look at this program. Okay, I hope you understand this. Of course, you can uh, ask question later, yeah? Is there funding available? Yep, I mentioned uh, about this. We have UITM Student Mobility Fund. Atau Dana Mobility Pelajar UITM, uh, open for diploma and uh, bachelor degree students. We have Asian International Mobility for Students, which is only catering for exchange program. And this exchange program involved for UITM. Let me just tell you straight away, for UITM, there are only four uh, areas that you can apply to. First is for international business. Second is uh, hospitality and tourism. Third is um, food technology. And, and, and the fourth one is uh, lang uh, language and culture. Language and culture. Okay. I, I have to give this information to you guys so that you know when you want to talk with your... Uh, uh, Head of program, for example, because you need to start to learn and to study and plan, right? Uh, if you are, you see here with Asian International Mobility for Students, um, the this Dana, this Dana does not consider whether you are B40 or non B40, meaning all of you will get the same amount. If, say, for example, the B40 get 10 ringgit, the non B40 will also get 10 ringgit. This is only for Asian International Mobility for Students. But for UITM Student Mobility Fund, it is not so. Uh, it, it will be categorized according to B40 and non B40. Okay, meaning, uh, and what happened is, uh, if, let's say, the program is costing, costing you 10 ringgit, okay, the, the B40 student can get 10 ringgit. 
but the non B40 program uh, the non B40 student will only get half of it 5 ringgit yeah uh, if we say that is is it fair it is actually fair yeah because the B40 students cannot afford at all actually yeah but the non B40 probably their parents can top up a little top up some yeah now another funding is from full sponsorship from international program so we have for the past two years yeah for the past two years is it past three years yeah the past three years uh, we have managed to secure this seed fund a uh, seed scholarship seed scholarship comes from the canadian government uh, and it's a very steep application and steep it's a competitive very competitive because all universities all over the world apply yeah and uh, uh, we have been lucky uh, in the first year that we apply we send uh, we apply the application must be through us our office a yeah, student cannot go straight to canadian government request no uh, there is an opening and uh, uitm needs to nominate the student so uh, we open the application to all students but because this is a very steep competitive uh, uh, scholarship yeah we chose the best student only even when you score four flat yeah we still have to interview you okay, we have we still have to interview you and we select yeah um so the first year we uh, we managed to get two students to receive the canadian government scholarship the second year we managed to get three students alhamdulillah and the third year uh, the students are going this year yeah uh three students as well now it depends on our partner university uh, we only have one university in canada that have uh, uh, MOU with us, so we are working. If if let's say Kedah, uh, uh, UITM Kedah has some link with um, the Canadian University, is better. It opens up chances, yeah, greater chances for us to send because each un Canadian University can only nominate to their government two students from one university. Yeah, so in the first semester, uh, uh, sorry, in the first year this one university managed to get us two students and then the second semester the same university fortunately we managed to get three instead of just two from one university but this year we went to our office approached many universities uh, but unfortunately on the due to certain reasons yeah only three candidates uh, to go to the same university as was previous and another one get to a university uh, which is new to us uh, we just get connected with them okay so that's a seed and who can apply for seed is bachelor degree students only for bachelor degree students not for diploma unfortunately and then we have what's known as U grad this is under the u.s government yeah u.s government uh, this is university uh, global something yeah uh, I, I don't recall the full uh, name for you grad but you can certainly google it up and this does not go through uh, our office we get to know about it uh, and usually we will inform students to start to apply basically but the application uh, is directly to uh, the u.s embassy it directly meaning it doesn't go through our office so you just you know if you are good enough of course there are conditions you go enough so you apply uh we we receive one student actually uh um we encourage students to apply for the past three years and only last year we had one student and she's now in the usa yeah? one student who managed to get you grad uh, in the the previous year that we started to encourage students to apply, we have a student who's uh, on reserve, yeah, because it's again it's very competitive. This particular student is on reserve, meaning if another candidate that they consider, uh, you know, is um, 
somehow something happened that the student uh, re- reject or something like that, then our candidate uh, can be selected. That's why they are on KIV, they are on a reserve. But last year, Alhamdulillah, one student managed to go and managed to get you grad. I don't remember how much do they are getting, uh, how much they are getting. For seed, they can get a scholarship for the whole duration uh, stay, uh, 10,000 Canadian dollar. It, I think it's 10,000 Canadian dollar. Uh, all inclusive, yeah, uh, the accommodation is accounted for mon- pocket money, so that 10,000 Canadian dollar. Okay, you grad, I don't remember how much do they get. Uh, uh, really, I do not remember. Then we have another one, Mevlana, through the Turkish government. Uh, so far, I'm in office. I have not yet um, involved or uh, have any anything with the Mevlana. But this is actually also through another support, a uh, European support uh, organization, Erasmus. You may have heard about Erasmus. Uh, so the Turkish government is using Erasmus as part of their uh, sponsorship. Yeah, uh, you can ca- you can Google up Erasmus E R A S uh, M U S Erasmus. Okay, then that's another one. If you apply for exchange program in Japan, you are eligible to apply for this scholarship, Student Services Organization scholarship. But you must first being accepted by a Japanese uh, university. Um, but as I said again, it's not a guarantee. But one one of the conditions for you to be able to get this uh, scholarship from the student services organization and from the Japanese go- uh, government is that you have never been to uh, you have never been to Japan. Uh, you have been accepted uh, by a university in Japan. Your parents cannot afford to send you things like that. Yeah. So this year. Alhamdulillah, one university has managed to secure seven scholarship under Student Services Organization, Japan Student Services Organization. UITM received seven scholarships. Yeah, seven scholarships, and they are leaving in October. Okay. Uh, another one that is also possible for you to apply and receive is by the Korean government. Yeah, uh, GKS, I don't remember, okay. Uh, uh, only this year, only this year uh, that we are offered this scholarship, but only for one student, yeah? And one student managed to get it from international business. Uh, she is now in Korea, um, and uh, I think she, um, uh, how much, I, I don't remember how much does the Korea government give, uh, but for the Japanese student, the Japanese uh, scholarship, each student will receive 80,000 yen per month. Okay, 80,000 yen per month, equivalent to all, uh, equivalent to 2,000 Malaysian ringgit per month. Okay, so you pergi, you dapat biasiswa ni, uh, tetapi you gunakan duit you dulu sendiri lah untuk semua uh, sponsors sponsors ini ya, uh, from seed, uh, you grad uh, and others ya, yeah, from all the sponsorship uh, usually in, um, you have to use your money first to, for the visa, uh, for the flight ticket uh, you have to use your money first but once you get there uh, apa tu, accommodation dia orang bagi semua-semua lah tu, uh, dan you dapat duit you semasa you di sana, okay, semasa you berada di host university Interesting kan? Ada peluang tak? Yes. Ada macam-macam peluang ya. There are many various ya. Uh, untuk you dapatkan uh, some help ya. Funding. Uh, daripada uh, untuk you belajar. Ya. Untuk you merasai uh, pengalaman berada di luar negara. Tapi uh, remember yang ni sponsorship ni. Seed, Ugrat, Mevlana, Jasso. These are all for exchange program. Similarly dengan Asian International Mobility Exchange Program. Tapi dana yang pertama ini, UITM Sinal Mobility Fund boleh digunakan untuk exchange, boleh digunakan untuk uh, shorter program like summer program. Ya. Yeah? 
Am I eligible? Yeah. However, the amount will depend on your parents' financial status, whether you're B40 or non B40, yeah. So this is under the tabung, yeah. This is under the tabung. You can see here. If you go to Europe, if you are B40, you will receive 8,000 Malaysian ringgit. Tak cukup ni sebenarnya. It's not enough because if you convert, how much is 1 euro to Malaysian ringgit? Memang tak cukup. But we can only give you 8,000. For the non B40, half. You can see that everything is half. We go to America, you only receive 7,000. Africa, 6,000. Go to Arab countries, 5,000. I'm just saying the larger amount, yeah? not the smaller amount. Australia, 5,000. Asia, 5,000. Southeast Asia is 3,200. So, these are the amount. So, you boleh dapatkan ni lah. Yeah, sekarang when you plan, bila you plan, you tengok ni, berapa you boleh dapat? Can your parents afford? If you are non B40, can your parent afford to give you another few thousand more to support you? And that's the reason why I say, rather than you aim to go further and you know you cannot afford to, might as well you work on something which is nearer. Yeah, Asia, India, contohnya lah ya, yeah? India, China, ya, yeah, boleh dapat. Uh, nak tahu yang pergi South East Asia, the countries uh, yang berdekatan dengan kita ni, and you get, you, you, you can afford, somehow you can afford somewhere. Ya, yeah, tapi kalau you pergi jauh, hmm, memang banyaklah lagi duit dia. Okay, uh, this is the fund under the student UITM Student Mobility Fund yeah? kalau AIMS, I didn't put it here yeah? under AIMS dia lain pula AIMS dia tidak ada B40 non B40, semua sama uh, dan uh, nilainya lebih tinggi yeah, tapi of course AIMS uh, hanya melibatkan negara seperti Jepun Korea uh, dan negara-negara ASEAN ASEAN ya, yeah? South East Asian countries Ya, yeah. uh, tidaklah negara lain tidak ke Europe mereka. Okey, yang itu kalau tak silap saya pergi ke Korea, you boleh dapat lima belas ribu Malaysia ringgit. Tapi untuk empat semester lah, ya yeah. lima belas ribu ke Korea empat semester. Okey, now to still talking about uh, funding, ya yeah. di macam ni ya yeah. kalau you dapat fund, uh, you dapat beasiswa. You tak layak untuk memohon mana-mana fund daripada UITM. Tak layak. Ya, yeah, sebab you akan gunakan beasiswa you. Contoh macam saya cakap tadi lah, SEED, JASO. Ya, yeah, sebab tu saya kata tadi untuk yang sponsorship seperti ini, you have, somehow you have to use your own money first. To go. To go. But once you are there, you will receive the scholarship. Ya, yeah, harap you faham ni ya. Yeah. How to apply for the financial assistance? Okay, once you have, uh, for example, yeah, you want to go for a summer program, you have to, uh, kalau summer program, dia tidak adalah offer letter from the host university. Yeah. Uh, kalau dia summer program, uh, brochure dia, brochure program. Yeah. You pasti dapatkan uh, kebenaran untuk ke luar negara. Uh, masih lagi memerlukan financial declaration of your parents ya yeah. uh, paperwork kena buat uh, biasanya faculty akan tolong buatlah untuk uh, campus uh, mungkin liaison officer akan tolong buat ataupun you buat bersama mungkin you buat you draftkan and then uh, dibaiki oleh uh, pencara dan sebagainya lah ya yeah. tapi you mesti datang daripada fakulti bermaksud dia kena ada surat iringan dia cover letter daripada kalau fakulti kalau fakulti dia kanya kalau uh, apa nama tu kalau dari kampus adalah daripada rektornya ya yeah. dan perlu mengisi study abroad application form ya yeah. study abroad application form ini boleh download daripada laman web UITM Global okey a validated examination transcript. Okay, kalau you pergi untuk exchange, kenalah get it validated. Ya, yeah, untuk apply. Um, tapi kalau untuk sama program, tak perlu. 
Tak perlulah examination transcript ni Tak perlu offer letter tetapi brochure uh, Tapi yang lain pun Ni perlu isi Okay now Ada tak lagi yang saya tinggal Ah, How many times can you apply? Berapa kali you boleh apply? Sekali saja tak di sepanjang pengajian you di UITM Sekali je you boleh apply Oleh kerana itu berhati-hati Kalau you yakin you boleh pergi untuk kredit transfer Reservekan dia untuk kredit transfer yeah. Kalau you nak pergi you nak buat kredit transfer Nak pergi sama program Choose mana satu you nak Kalau kredit transfer is much better Because as I said you are staying longer in the host country And you get transfer credit Uh, and you learn more because you are staying longer So save it for credit transfer Ya yeah, credit transfer program uh, Tapi ingat juga untuk you memilih seperti itu Ingat balik Kalau kursus-kursus uh, uh, itu dan universiti itu adalah di bawah AIMS Yang tadi tadi ya eh? yang, yang AIMS itu Asian International Student of uh, International Student Mobility for Student uh, Sorry Uh, Asian International uh, Mobility for Student ya, AIMS tu uh, Ia hanya untuk kredit transfer Ya yeah. uh, Jadi kalau katalah uh, You kata okay uh, doktor saya um, Fakulti Daripada fakulti Apa ya nanti kejap ya eh. Fakulti sensukan lah katakan ya eh. Kedah ada ke sensukan hmm, Tak ingat lah saya kalau FSD, katalah FSD lah kat situ ada FSD um, Tapi tak ada food tech Tak ada kursus, tak ada program food tech dekat situ Contoh ya, you, tapi you daripada fakulti sains gunaan Boleh ke saya nak apply untuk AIMS? Eh boleh Tapi uh, you kena ambil language and culture Ataupun kalau kursusnya ada uh, Kursusnya um, berkait dengan food tech Something to do with food tech Uh, food tech ni not necessarily everything kena ada perkataan food, 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 food kan Tapi mungkin ada something, maybe ada something to do with bacteria ke Tapi uh, dia berkait, kalau dalam food tech tu dia ada kaitan dia uh, Dan dia ada teknologi part of it Mungkin you belajar tentang uh, instrumentation Instrumentation adalah part of things that you learn in food technology uh, So, ataupun you belajar tentang, I don't know, I, I don't know. If you are doing physics, for example, yeah, physics, uh, bachelor degree in physics uh, under FSG. So, can I go for food tech? You have to look at the courses that's being offered by the university, uh, partner university under AIMS. Uh, yang itu you boleh check. Yeah? Kalau AIMS tu, you boleh check. Uh, you boleh um, go through... Um, Simeo Raihat. Uh, okay, nanti saya bagikan dia punya tu ya. Simeo Raihat AIMS. Uh, Simeo Raihat AIM Programs. Nanti you, dia akan bawa you kepada laman web dia. You boleh semaklah negara mana uh, dan juga universiti mana. Ya, yeah. Dan you boleh semak dekat situ. Macam saya kata tadi lah mungkin you nak dapatkan maklumat tentang khusus yang ditawarkan. Uh, untuk semester akan datang contohnya You just want to find out Bukan nak memohon Nak find out dulu Tapi you ada intention untuk memohon You boleh maklumkan I have an intention to do uh, An exchange program with you uh, at, at your university uh, But uh, right now I am not sure of it I need to find the courses um, So <clears throat> Okay, so um, apa nama tu? Dah tukar maklumat tu dulu lah Ataupun um, uh, that's the only way somehow That's the only way Sama ada you pergi ke host university punya website And find uh, find out that Ataupun mungkin I don't know if you have friends ke I don't know honestly speaking But the best is actually to go through the host university's website And find out Okay and then you boleh lah katakan uh, Ada khusus-khususnya yang mungkin under fizik dia Dia ada kaitan Ya, yeah, tapi you kena bercakaplah dengan you punya academic advisor. Uh, tahu? Okay, you ambil bachelor degree in physics. Uh, tak ada pun khusus berkaitan yang boleh dapatkan credit transfer. Why not work on the language and culture? So, under language and culture ataupun tengok juga kepada khusus-khusus yang boleh diambil kira sebagai elective. 
eh, kursus elektif. Kalau di elektif not necessary you ambil kursus yang berada di UITM kan. Ha, maksudnya you bolehlah ambil di host university dan uh, apa nama tu choose lah kursus-kursus ini dan jadikan dia again you kena cakap dengan bercakap dengan uh, academic advisor ataupun ketua program ya. You nak ambil kursus-kursus ini saya nak dia uh, ambil dia di bawah Uh, apa nama tu elektif. Sebab itu saya kata uh, adalah baik kalau nak buat exchange program ni you pergi pada semester 2, 3, 4, 5. Sebab you uh, mungkin pada year 1, year 2 masih ada elektif program yang you boleh pilih. Ya, yeah? uh, Tetapi uh, bila you berada di semester 5 mungkin elektif tu dah tak ada dah lah. So yang kalau you pergi kepada uh, semester 4, 5, 6 That means dia kena uh, khusus spesifik lah sebab biasanya khusus-khusus ni disusun daripada yang general pergi kepada more spesifik. Ya, yeah, khusus-khusus di UITM ini susunan ni daripada semester 1 sampai uh, semester terakhir adalah daripada general kepada spesifik. Maksudnya uh, as you go higher and higher in your semester, um, the courses are more geared towards your your field. Uh, if you are in engineering, dia memang betul-betul engineering proper. Kalau dia fizik, uh, memang higher uh, fizik punya. Uh, and so on so forth. Faham tak? Uh, jadi, sebab tu bila saya cadangkan dari you plan, when I request and suggest that you plan for your uh, credit transfer program, exchange program, you really have to go through it. Yeah. And another one is, uh, this is for the uh, university, uh, for um, uh, the campus and also for the faculty that they have to remember that it must be a reciprocate program. Reciprocate means uh, macam mana? Okay, untuk you student, tak ada masalah. You boleh apply. Tapi untuk the faculty, untuk the campus, they have to look at uh, you hantar ke uh, Chula Longkon. Uh, you kena minta daripada Chula Longkon uh, maknanya kena berbuat baik dengan Chula Longkon atau you kena uh, encourage uh, Chula Longkon to send student also to your campus. Uh, itu yang dipanggil sebagai reciprocate. Dan kebiasaannya untuk reciprocate. Yeah, reciprocate juga bermaksud begini. Ya, yeah, salah uh, satunya of course kalau dia ada MOU memang sedia maklumlah uh, the tuition fee is Wave, A wave meaning bukanlah tak bayar, tapi tak tidak bayar di host university, bayar di UITM saja. Tu yang pertama. Reciprocate juga supaya uh, uh, supaya kalau boleh, uh, kalau boleh kita kita cuba negotiate. Kalau host university boleh bagi uh, accommodation free, maka kita pun akan balas. Maknanya UITM juga akan bagi pada student daripada universiti ini uh, accommodation free. Tapi kalau mereka kata contoh universiti di Jepang dia memang tak bagi accommodation free. So kita pun tidak akan memberi pelajar dia free accommodation bila mereka ke sini. Contoh bila dia pergi Kedah, uh, kita tak Kedah jangan bagi dia free lah. Yeah, jangan bagi accommodation free. Itu maksud dia. Uh, walaupun reciprocate recipro here ialah timbang balas ni maksudnya you bagi I satu, you bagi, uh, I bagi you satu. Eh, yes. You bagi I satu, I bagi you satu. Tapi kalau I bagi you satu, you tak bagi, uh, baik jangan buat. Uh, maksudnya boleh je hantar ke universiti tu. Tapi you've got to pay lah. Sebab sekarang ni saya nampak uh, due to pandemic, yeah, due to pandemic, uh, Japan, Japan is not uh, really opening their doors. Yeah? And they are not really encouraging their students to leave. Uh, to leave the country yet unless they are very sure that the students are like uh, only uh, nowadays movement for students are largely uh, for academic purpose saja. Kebanyakan universiti, uh, kebanyakan negara buatlah sebab the cases are you know uh, keep uh, you know uh, dia, dia macam how do you say this yeah it going up and down yeah uh, it's not stable yeah for safety reason most universities are very cautious about this yeah and uh, so maybe uh, our government allows our student to leave the country and go for other university yeah uh, mungkin berlaku keadaan di mana hanya kita je pergi universiti tu tapi universiti untuk 2 tahun tak tak datang tak hantar student 
uh, bolehlah berlaku macam tu and discharge us. Uh, tapi ada juga keadaan di mana dengan MOA. Ya, yeah, ada uh, memorandum of agreement. Uh, universiti cakap dalam satu tahun ah uh, ini berlaku di universiti di United States of America ya, yeah, USA hari itu. Okey, uh, dalam satu tahun kita hanya boleh terima pelajar uh, seramai empat orang pelajar sahaja. Empat orang pelajar. Uh, jadi maksudnya uh, pelajar sama ada boleh stay sana empat-empat ni uh, satu tahun ya. Uh, boleh ambil satu tahun, empat orang ni ambil sekali satu tahun. Ataupun uh, tahun ini, uh, semester ini satu orang pelajar. Semester depan satu orang pelajar lagi. Maknanya uh, every time mesti empat saja. Uh, berlaku juga keadaan seperti itu ya yeah? depending on the memorandum of understanding and agreement as well uh, usually is a memorandum of agreement but this is not your bother students for you student is mine you can apply tapi uh, ni must be checked by uh, the, the the faculty and also uh, the campus lah campus kena check on this one kalau ada MOA uh, maka kena tahu apakah uh, arrangement dia Ya, yeah. sebab MOU tu dia very generic nature dia. Ya. Yeah. Okay, you need to talk with the lesson officer ataupun uh, you need to talk with the ad academic advisor and whoever that's responsible for your academic uh, at uh, at your campus. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Or you can even reach out to us uh, by email. Uh, reach out to us uh, but of course again I want to remind you anything to do with academic matters uh, we cannot meddle you ITM Global or under our office we cannot meddle on this one we tell the campus that uh, you have a student for example uh, you get nominated by your campus to go to a university what we will tell the campus is that are you ready to give them a credit transfer to give the student a credit transfer work on the credit transfer yeah work on the credit transfer because we do not want students to go and waste their time for one semester and pay tuition at UITM and then they come back with no credit transfer instead they have to uh, extend their semesters this is not fair Okay, so we we usually uh, tell the faculty and the campus uh, that ensure that the students are being treated justly, yeah, being fair with them, yeah. Because bukannya you pergi sana just for fun, you are learning, you are studying, yeah. Okay, so that's it on the undergraduate. Um, shall I continue with the postgraduate studies? Shall I continue with the postgraduate studies or shall I stop now? Um. Sorry? Proxy? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, for postgraduate studies, not much. Uh, not much actually. Oops. Okay, do we support? <laughs> do we support? Well, I said if you are doing exchange program, we can certainly nominate you to the university. But financially, financial wise, finance wise, uh, we cannot support. We are not supporting. Okay, now what about when you have graduated and you want to do for, uh, you want to apply for postgraduate studies overseas? Unfortunately, we cannot process you. We cannot help you with this. You have to do it on your own. Yeah, but we, we can make suggestion. We can connect you with the university, but everything you have to do on your own. Yeah, because it's postgraduate studies. These are among the useful links that you can go to if you are now in your final semester and you think that you want to go and study abroad. These are some of the useful links that you can uh, surf through and uh, find out all opportunities. Many of these are giving, uh, many of these have got information about uh, possibility of being sponsored. Yeah, of being sponsored. Yeah, by uh, sometimes the sponsorship comes from the university. Sometimes it can come from organization. Yeah, 
So you can have a look uh, at all this, yeah, at all these uh, links. Uh, okay. Um, well, what is it that you need to prepare yourself? You want to go overseas? Of course, these are among the things. You need to ensure that you are healthy. You don't want to be stuck uh, at the at different uh, country and sick, yeah, uh, or or fall sick. You don't want that. You must make sure that you are healthy. You have to have travel insurance. Uh, of course, you've got to buy a plane ticket. Uh, you've got to find out first about the country that you want to go to. Yeah, Many of us don't do this, you know. You just, you know, blindly go. But you have to find out. The recent students uh, who's going to Japan, yeah, uh, we have got uh, uh, students uh, who are going to Japan. Uh, they already find out like when they arrive at the airport, uh, which uh, station, uh, how do they go to the university? Uh, are they going to get another uh, flight or are they going to go by train or how? So they find out on this first and yeah, they get familiar with it. Of course, you can read about the culture and the custom and the people just so to prepare yourself so you don't get that much of a culture shock. Yeah, you have to get some money. You have to have some money. You've got to change your money to the currency uh, of the host country uh, so that it will be easier. Like, for example, you've got to get a taxi, or the, the public transport, basically. You can't use our money. Certainly, you've got to have uh, money of that country. Yeah. And yes, certainly, you have to apply for their passport and visa. Now, a passport and visa, in order for you to apply for a visa, I think for most countries, uh, your passport has to be valid for at least 18 months. Maksudnya, visa, um, passport you tak mati. Uh, maksudnya, uh, bila you apply untuk visa ni, passport you valid lagi sehingga katalah you nak pergi tahun depan kan, 2023. Visa you akan hidup lagi sehingga uh, 23, 24, 25. Sekurang-kurangnya sehingga 2025. Uh, macam tu cara dia. Yeah? Then only you can apply for visa. Okay, uh, for uh, students uh, to go abroad, to go abroad, yeah, nak dapatkan visa ini biasanya our office hanya provide surat sokongan saja jika diperlukan. Uh, urusan lain semua you all, you all kena buat sendiri. Yeah, you kena hubungi embassy, maksudnya go to the website of the embassy, find out how to apply for visa, dia akan bagi you guideline lah. You have to do it on your own disebabkan uh, first ialah you, uh, UITM bukan agent. Ya yeah, sebab memang boleh dapat visa melalui agent tapi UITM bukanlah agent ya. Yeah. Uh, dia kena individu lah. So individu yang nak nak pergi tu dia lah kena pergi sendiri sebab macam ke US dia ada interview session. Ya. Yeah. Uh, dan sebenarnya mendapatkan visa contoh ke US sendiri pun uh, Kadang-kadang dia macam, I can't say it is by chance atau nasib sahaja ya. Sebab kadang-kadang it can get rejected. So the documents needed, uh, you have to have all the documents needed. Contohnya kalau nak pergi ke Jepun ya. Uh, universiti di Jepun itu akan um, oleh kerana uh, kerajaan dia perlukan dokumen A, B, C, D. Jadi beberapa dokumen itu datangnya daripada universiti. Jadi universiti itu akan sediakan all these documents. Uh, dan hantar kepada kita dan pelajar akan bawa kepada embassy untuk tujuan mendapatkan visa. Yeah, you boleh buat appointment lah untuk buat visa dan sebagainya. Yeah. So uh, quite unfortunate if you are staying in Kedah uh, or in the northern part or outside Klang Valley. Most embassies of course are found here in uh, Klang Valley. Uh, Canadian embassy is in Singapore. So they don't, uh, no, they have uh, embassy here but for visa purpose, uh, we have to apply in the at the embassy in Singapore. Dahsyat kan? <laughs> yeah, that means you have to travel to Singapore if you want to go to Canada. Yeah, tetapi yang lain, uh, it can be in uh, here, yeah, in Kuala Lumpur itself. But you have to find out all information. The most that you ITM can 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 support you uh, is to provide you with some some kind of letter only if get requested by the embassy. Kalau embassy tu tak request, kita tak provide apa-apa pun. You just go there. Uh, membawa dokumen yang diberi oleh host university. 
uh, saya bercerita ini, I'm telling you this, based on the current situation, students to Japan, for example, again talking about going to Japan, yeah, because um, currently uh, I'm handling students to Korea and also Japan. Okay, what happened is they they want um, there are documents that on the embassy gave, yeah, that you have to fill and the university have to provide because in the past, uh, such documents are not required, but now the embassy wants all those things. The documents. Now, even to go to Indonesia, let me tell you this. These are the things that have changed since the pandemic due to inflation. Yeah, due to inflation. Okay. Even the Indonesian uh, government now are requesting uh, students who want to go to study in Indonesia, even for a short period like an exchange program, they're requesting some amount of money to be in your account to japan last time to 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 get a visa a student must have at least 16000 malaysian ringgit in your account in your own account not your parents your own account 16000 ringgit the recent one this year uh, one student told me that uh, the, the the government wants to see 44,000 ringgit in the student's account before a visa is granted. Uh, this is going to Japan again. Yeah, to Japan again. But because the student is going under the AIMS program, uh, the embassy is fully aware about AIMS program and the student's name are already listed uh, to the letter to the embassy. Therefore, um, the students uh, does not need to uh, to to show the forty four thousand, but the students uh, already have sixteen thousand in the account. Because this is my advice to all uh, liaison officers. Yeah, if the student choose to go to Japan, make sure that they have at least a minimum, at least yeah, at least sixteen thousand in their account. Kalau tak ada 16,000, forget about Japan. If you don't have that much money, forget about Korea. Forget about the US. US dia perlukan berapa untuk visa hari tu? I don't remember. It's a lot, a lot. I think 10,000 USD kot. 10,000 USD, imagine you have to have nearly 50,000 in your account. That's how they they are right now. Yeah, uh, They need to have financial statement. And that's the reason why I said you better choose countries which are cheaper, nearer, but still can give you the global experience. Sebab katalah you pergi ke Indonesia, ya, ke Indonesia. Di Indonesia itu sendiri pun, di mereka menerima uh, students daripada Australia. Australia suka pergi, Australian suka pergi Indonesia, ya. Uh, mereka menerima daripada Australia, mereka menerima daripada European country. So, you still have global experience. So, rather than you, I'm not saying that you're wasting money, but for your parents to come up with 40, 44,000, it's not that easy. You see, 44,000 Malaysian ringgit, it's not that easy. Yeah, and it has to be deposited into your own account. Of course, lepas tu bila you dah dapat visa, you dah pergi sana, but pulangkan balik duit boleh. Tapi nak come up with 44,000 is not easy. To come up with uh, again ya, tadi 10,000 USD. No, it is not easy. Some country requires not per semester but per month. You have to get the money, you have to have the money for per month. Imagine that is expensive. So, fikir-fikirkan lah. Yeah? So, you need to refresh your uh, language skill uh, and make sure that your mobile phone is good. And then, here is my last word. Get out there. The world is waiting. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening to me. Uh, if you have any questions, please, you can ask me and inshallah, I'll try to give you a good answer to it. Thank you so much. That's it. I pass this over back to the moderator. Yeah.
you muted moderator can i can't hear what you're saying i'm very sorry <laughs> okay can you hear me is it clear Hello. I can hear you. Don't know about the rest. Okay, okay, okay. All right, as long as you can hear me, and I'm sure the the rest were also able to hear me. All right. Uh, thank you so much again, Doctor. After such an informative sharing session, uh, I'm sure our participants today will get a clear understanding about our objective today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a Q and A session. Uh, I've seen some questions in the comments. Let me highlight it. All right. In the comment section. Okay, from Siti Fatima. Okay, I'll show in the screen. Adakah peluang ke luar negara ini dibuka setiap tahun? Dr. Rosa, it is your question. <laughs> Please explain to us. <laughs> Yes, Siti Fatina. Fatima, it opens every year and if you are interested with the exchange, I don't know somehow I <laughs> always stress on the exchange. Um, exchange programs open every semester. Like for now, uh, let me tell you, uh, most universities have already opened their door for spring 2023. In spring 2023 means uh, for us, it will be much uh, March session, and that's spring 2023. In some universities, uh, their spring starts earlier. In Indonesia, um, they have already had their uh, fall semester. Yeah, maknanya they want to start bulan sembilan. This month, they already started their classes. Yeah, uh, then they finish uh, before end of the year. In yeah, before the end of the year, bulan dua belas, they dah habis. Jadi, dia akan start balik uh, bulan, some bulan dua lah. Early bulan dua ataupun ada tu bulan satu dah mula balik. Ya, yeah? sebab itu mereka buka uh, application ini awal. Sekarang ni untuk nomination. Ya, yeah? untuk nomination. Nomination apa? Pencalonan eh. Uh, pencalonan dibuka sekarang dalam uh, oleh beberapa universiti. In fact, itulah you kena cepat lah. Uh, Bukan untuk Siti Fatimah saja, untuk orang lain semua. Uh, kena, kena ni lah. I think maybe bagus ni kalau you are now dalam semester 1, semester 2 kan. Sebab you boleh plan panjang masa untuk plan. Tapi kalau you dah semester 5, semester uh, semester 5 sekarang nak pergi semester 6. Memang kena cepat lah. Waktu cuti ni lah boleh, boleh plan very well and um, yelah, uh, cari maklumat semua. Okay. Okey, saya harap menjawablah soalan Siti Fatimah tadi berkenaan dengan sama ada peluang keluar negara dibuka setiap tahun atau tidak. Kita proceed hmm. uh, to the next question. Uh, from Syarihah Syariha, Syahiratul Umi. Uh, doctor, I have a question. Where do most Malaysian UITM students study abroad? <laughs> uh, let me tell you. Um... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I think so far, um, most go to Korea and Japan. Yeah, Korea and Japan. Uh, tapi itulah, um, saya dah bagitahulah uh, the pro and cons of going away that far. Uh, semasa pandemik hari tu, MCO, uh, we because um, not many... Uh, Universities actually offer or of uh, online programs, so many goes to Indonesia. Um, but right now, also we have Indonesia uh, students going to Indonesia. So really, it, it uh, because your question is where do most Malaysian new Adam students to study abroad? Uh, see, right now for exchange program is to Korea and Japan. Uh, at least yang ke Korea ni, I can give berapa berapa ramai semai ini saja. Eh. Uh, let me see. Uh, we have got two to Kyung Hee, Wusong, Wusong tak ada. Kyung Hee, uh, KNU ada lima. Uh, and then pergi ke suku wak empat, sembilan, sepuluh. I think close to more than 15 students lah. Uh, pergi Jepun dan Korea. <laughs> Jepun dan Korea ya, uh, campur dua-dua. Okay. 
cook I answer your question okay. Okay. <laughs> Mungkin disebabkan ramai sekarang kan Korean wave dengan Japan pun ramai orang yang minat dengan Japanese punya culture but that's why. <laughs> okay. Alright and then we we'll proceed with the next question from how do I pronounce it? Shahir Az. If saya sambung belajar ke luar negara dalam kurungan Korea, how can kita faham bahasa diorang in a short time? For sure, for sure lecturer kat sana ajar dalam bahasa Korea, not English, right? Uh, okay. The floor is This yours. Is ana- <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> This is another thing um, that I discover uh, while handling students, yeah. Um, why, uh, okay, unlike our university, most other universities do not offer their courses in English. So they have very limited courses that are taught in English, In uh, except of course if the countries are uh, uh, the first mother tongue is English, yeah? but for Korea, for Japan, for India, uh, I think India mostly will be in uh, English as well. Um, for Indonesia, um, I'm not sure about Brunei, but or Thailand, most countries, they do not have that many courses that are offered in English. Many of them are in their own language. So your question now is like, if when you go to Korea, okay, I think we have got, I forgot the name of this guy, okay, he's a Japanese, uh, he's Japanese, and before he comes to Malaysia, he's actually doing an exchange program to Malay, uh, University of Malaya. I met him uh Was it last semester? Yeah, I think so. Or was it last year? Uh, last year. I met him last year. So, he's a student. Ni nak bagi contoh lah kan. How can kita faham bahasa dia orang in such short time. So, this student from uh, from Japan ni, uh, dia memang belajar melalui YouTube. Belajar melalui YouTube bahasa Melayu. And dia buat ni dalam, kalau tak silap saya lah, dalam tempoh tiga bulan. And he's a very famous YouTuber sebenarnya. Dia buat, ya, yeah, YouTuber ke? Ya, yeah. uh, famous YouTuber. Tapi saya tak ingat nama dia, Masya Allah. But he's so famous that, um, ramailah yang nanti, uh, the, uh, whoever that follow becomes a fo- fo- his follower, memang komen lah. Tapi memang what he did was that, dia memang belajar secara intensif tapi melalui YouTube uh, bahasa Melayu. So when he arrives, um, when I met him, he was just about a month in Malaysia. Dia baru sampai. Yeah. And that was uh, during ya ni, Raya Haji. Yeah. Uh, eh, no, 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 no. Hari Raya. Uh, hari Raya kita. Maknanya tahun ni lah saya jumpa dia. Eh. Waktu Hari Raya, kami jemput pelajar international untuk datang Uh, menyaksikan dan uh, mencuba buat bubur lambuk. Yeah? So that's where, uh, then dia datang dengan pakaian dia lah, uh, pakaian I, I don't remember what his name ya, yeah? uh, pakaian pakaian Jepun dia yeah? sebab saya kata, bolehlah kalau nak pakai pakaian tradisional. So dia memang datang daripada UM tu pakai pakaian tradisional. Uh, yang yang tu lah. Tapi tak ada pedang je kan. So lepas tu dia bercakap dengan saya dalam bahasa Melayu. So I I was quite surprised. I asked you, are you a Japanese? And he said, yes. Um, but how do you pick up our language very fast? So he said before he came, he learned. Yeah, within a very, uh, two, three months saja kot dia belajar. And then when he come, uh, he speak the language. He speak Malay all the time. Uh, walaupun I converse in, with him in English most of the time uh, and his friends too because he he he, he has friends from international uh, 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 from other nationalities as well kan uh, tapi bila dengan Melayu dia memang cakap Melayu uh, tapi I tak ingatlah nama dia siapa but that's an example of how you can yeah because memang a lot of their macam you kan you nak buat postgraduate studies kan Mm, so memang kebanyakan khusus mereka tidak ada dalam bahasa Inggeris lah. So you got to be prepared to prepare yourself. Okay, that's it. Any more question? Okay, ada lagi. Uh, doktor boleh jawab lagi ke doktor? Boleh. Sampai pukul 12 kan? Iya okay. <laughs> yeah, betul. <laughs> lagi ada soalan kita bagi. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, oh, Alright. Soalan seterusnya, Yana Zainal, doktor, saya ada soalan. Adakah peluang keluar negara ini hanya terhad kepada golongan pelajar yang tertentu? Mm-mm, no. I dah mention tadi, in UITM, 
memang kita ada ramai yang berbagai lah kan. Uh, kita kalau pelajar tertentu ni maksud uh, semua mem- mempunyai peluang. Ya yeah, semua mempunyai peluang yang sama rata. Cuma tadilah dari, dari aspek keuangan itu saja yang mungkin membataskan uh, pelajar untuk uh, pergi ke negara yang dia sukalah. Ya, yeah. uh, tapi semua pelajar tak kira pada aras mana pun uh, mereka mempunyai peluang yang sama untuk dapat ke luar negara. Saya nak bagi tahu ni. Kalau sekiranya uh, dia uh, you, you, you ingat balik yang saya kata benefits of doing student mobility ni ya. Yeah. Janganlah melihat hanya kepada exchange sebab exchange ni mahal contohnya ya. Yeah. Tapi kalau you nak pergi kepada sama program, kalau parents you tak mampu um, tapi you berhasrat untuk pergi. Maka joinlah program sama yang bersifat sama program ni. Ya. Yeah. Uh, yalah uh, sebab kita kita ada banyak sebenarnya uh, ada ada beberapa kampus, beberapa fakulti yang memohon menggunakan dana tabung untuk membawa pelajar membawa pelajar ke luar negara. Tapi macam saya katalah paperwork tu kena sangat cantik, very convincing. Uh, dia punya nilai, dia punya outcome, everything must be very very good. So you can work even MPP sekalipun. Ya yeah, MPP kalau you nak pergi a certain program yang bersifat leadership kan contohnya or team or whatever it is. And it is a summer program. Yes, a fine uh, apa ni you you have to work with your penasihat Uh, and come up with a very very good paperwork uh, and I think the chance is there. So dalam MPP tu tak semestinya I mean, siapa-siapalah basically uh, my, my answer is that no it is not limited to certain people everyone can even if you are not datuk. Cuma tu lah kalau you dah T20 <laughs> kalau you tak minta pakai duit you ITM kami sangat bersyukur <laughs> tapi kami bantu dari aspek tertentu lah. Maksudnya kalau you just need the money to buy. Uh, ada one student ni dia pergi Jerman uh, un- for exchange. ya. Yeah? Uh, dia pergi ke Jerman. Tahu-tahu saja uh, saya tanyalah dah apply ke dah nak melalui liaison officer. Yeah? Saya tanya student ni jadi ke pergi? Pergi doktor. Dah apply dah visa everything dan dapat pun. Dan kata student uh, doktor student ni ni cuma minta dia adalah minta sikit duit je. Duit dia dalam tak tahulah berapa. Dia minta sikit sangat duit yang dia minta tu. Sebab parents dia can afford. So dia pergi Jerman tu kalau ikutkan anda dia punya tu sendiri. Tapi kita bagi dia peluang. Kita bukakan pintu yang dia tu boleh pergi ke universiti ini uh, bawah uh, apa tu bawah exchange program. So pelajar tu dah balik dah pun. Dan saya pun dah bercakap dengan parents dia sebenarnya. <laughs> so, salah bercakap. <laughs> so uh, itulah jawapan saya kepada soalan you tu. Okay. Alright. So jawapannya tidaklah tidak terhad. Mm-mm. So uh, soalan seterusnya daripada Nurin Fakihah. Doktor saya ada soalan apakah faktor yang sepatutnya dititik beratkan sekiranya saya memilih untuk study ke luar negara? Uh, soalan so, saya uh, okay soalan saya lah study ke luar negara ni uh, under long term ke short term ke macam mana? Uh, adakah uh, semasa masih pelajar di UITM ataupun bagaimana? Um, Mungkin Nurul Fakihah boleh masih belajar di UITM. Uh, is it it? Uh, okay. Kalau masih belajar di UITM, okay of course you yeah, faktor yang sepatutnya dititik beratkan. Untuk uh, a bit con- uh, jah, eh, a bit difficult to answer dia nampak macam senang kan? <laughs> Sekiranya saya memilih untuk study ke luar negara. Itulah macam saya kata um, kalau you masih pelajar UITM uh, you nak um, the, the chance yang you nak pergi tu adalah untuk exchange program, internship, uh, research attachment, uh, training ya yeah. um, ataupun you pergi kepada program-program bersifat sama program shorter shorter terms ya. Yeah. Apa yang perlu dititikkan beratkan eh, dititik beratkan of course kesihatan you kena dan your ability your ability to adapt ya yeah, ability to adapt sebab kita ad, kita takut juga ada bukan sahaja pelajar ya yeah. ada juga orang dewasa yang diberi peluang pergi ke luar negara tiba-tiba jatuh sakit ha, benda macam tu and you kena uphold lah uphold nama nama keluarga nama universiti uh, nama negara uh, 
uh, of course you have to work hard kalau you buat uh, ambil kursus ya belajar uh, untuk exchange program you have to work hard lah you have to work hard sebab biasanya pelajar yang terpilih pelajar-pelajar yang pergi untuk exchange ni adalah pelajar yang terpilih ya bukannya uh, of course kalau saya dapat uh, 3.0 je dah boleh mohon memang betul boleh di, boleh mohon jadi you kena kena uphold lah benda tu Ya, kena uphold uh, the aspect that you are actually a good student Sebab ada recommendation sebenarnya daripada uh, pihak uh, campus ataupun faculty Kena bagi recommendation kenapa select student ini Some some universities dia tak tengok pun uh, recommendation Some uni, macam saya Bila saya dapat recommendation letter daripada pelajar yang nak masuk ke UITM ni uh, Saya serah kepada faculty Kalau faculty ni saya hantar terus kepada faculty. Faculty lah yang akan ni. Saya rasa sama jugalah kalau you nak pergi ke universiti luar negara recommendation letter tu penting. Uh, dan dalam recommendation letter tu sebab ini open recommendation letter kadang-kadang student boleh baca. Uh, you boleh tengok lah kat situ lecturer you cakap apa berkaitan uh, berkenaan you. Jadi you kena jaga part tu. Part yang lecturer you kata you bagus lah what not tu. Uh, yang tu you kena jaga. Ya. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, jaga diri you elok-elok lah. Uh, pergi ke luar negara ini uh, can be a culture shock to to many. Uh, that's why I said just now uh, your ability to adapt, your ability to adapt, ability to understand the culture uh, and to remember who you are. I think I answer your question. Alright, saya pun rasa soalan tu lah. Jawapan tu telah menjawab soalan lah. Okey, uh, ada soalan lagi satu bukan daripada Nur. Kita proceed dengan lagi dua soalan boleh, Doktor? Boleh, boleh. So, soalan daripada Nur Nabilah Najwa. Kalau untuk internship, kita hanya boleh apply di universiti sahaja atau di company atau organisation lain juga? Ah, okey. Ada je. Boleh. You boleh apply kat mana-mana pun sebenarnya. Uh, tetapi um, Urusannya, uh, okay, kalau katalah you nak pergi negara mana lah, ke Australia lah contohnya kan, ke Australia untuk internship di satu company. So, company tu kena sediakanlah semua dokumen yang berkaitan sebab uh, internship ni depends on uh, how it is being described ataupun the understanding at the immigration level ya. Yeah. Sebab uh, ada ketikanya Uh, macam contoh kalau di, uh, kejap ya eh, saya nak ingat balik kalau pergi ke Jepun kot ya yeah, sebab ada ura-ura yang mana UITM ni um, uh, nak 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 ada some kind of collaboration yang mana pelajar-pelajar boleh pergi ke company di uh, Jepun untuk uh, melalui internship. Uh, tetapi dia akan kena lihat dan company ya eh, bukan universiti. Kalau universiti Universiti ni senang sikit. Kalau company ni dia ada sedikit payah dari aspek imigrasi, immigration <laughs> dari aspek immigration. Ya yeah, sebabnya um, macam mana nak cakap ya. Yes? So far ni kita ada je student yang pergi intern ke company-company. Uh, selalunya yang yang Uh, diuruskan oleh sendiri oleh fakulti ya. Eh? Oh, fakulti tu uruskan sendiri sebab tak adalah melalui melalui kami. Kami uh, akan menyimpan maklumatlah. Uh, fakulti akan maklumkan kepada kami siapa-siapa uh, pelajar yang pergi detail dia pelajar tu juga kena isi borang yang outbound tu. Tapi urusan dengan company itu adalah antara uh, lecturer yang um, terlibat PIC dia dengan company. Uh, dan immigration pun begitu sebab certain company tu dia kena be clear uh, Bila dia buat tawaran tu dia kena clear lah untuk internship ni tujuan pembelajaran Kan biasanya internship memang pembelajaran lah so kena be clear on that one But I do know that it is harder to actually go for company uh, Macam saya kata kita ada pelajar daripada fakulti seni reka dulu lah Dulu dia panggil fakulti seni reka seni bina sekarang dia dah jadi college of uh, Apa art um, Universiti AC College of Artistic Art or something <laughs> College of Art uh, Tak ingat lah CAC But uh, CCA College of something Creative Art eh? College of Creative Art um, 
jadi uh, FSSR ni dia, dia memang ramai pelajar dia pergi ke Indonesia untuk internship. Dan Indonesia tu macam ada banyak company yang on the uh, ni kan yang on the outside lah. Uh, ya yeah. jadi saya pernah uh, bukan menguruskan ni menguruskan pelajar balik sewaktu pandemik lah. Tetapi memang semester ini pun ada pelajar yang pergi uh, buat uh, ni sebab dia orang dah ada MOE. Uh, dengan uh, company tersebut. Ada juga pelajar baru ini dia pergi, I think pelajar ke? Oh, Kelantan, Kelantan. Uh, dia buat internship dengan satu bank di Arab Saudi. Ya, yeah? uh, kami tak ada halangan pun boleh. Arrangement uh, pelajar ataupun uh, faculty dengan company itu adalah arrangement sendiri. Kami hanya perlukan data. Tak boleh pelajar pergi tanpa dimaklumkan kepada kami. We need to know. Because kalau berlaku apa-apa, this is one thing that you guys need to know ya. Yeah. You nak pergi ke luar negara sebab apa perlu memohon kebenaran atau kelulusan daripada universiti kerana jika berlaku sebarang uh, perkara yang tidak elok, uh, uh, kita boleh membuat tindakan, uh, membantu. ya. Yeah. Uh, sebab nama-nama you akan dihantar ke Wisma Putra. Uh, Wisma Putra ini adalah yang terlibat, uh, yang inilah yang menjaga hal ehwal rakyat Malaysia ya, uh, kat mana pun rakyat Malaysia berada. Jadi kalau you pergi tanpa pengetahuan universiti ya, uh, sebab you dapat offer daripada company ni maka you pun uh, uh, suka-suka je pergi tanpa memaklumkan kepada pihak yang, uh, pihak universiti jika berlaku apa-apa pihak universiti tak boleh tolong you. Uh, contohnya kalau you pergi ke negara yang bergolak kan, uh, kita tak tahu pun negara itu akan bergolak Uh, katalah Ukraine hari tu uh, Pergi ke Ukraine Kita tak tahu pun yang Rusia tu akan menyerang Ukraine Contohnya Tiba-tiba berlaku dan you berada dalam kesukaran di sana Dan jika kita tidak tahu Kita tak boleh bantu you No matter how It's difficult for us to help Sebab kita tak tahu Jadi uh, Again coming back so Panjang lebar jawapan saya ni Cuma untuk memberi you maklumat lah Kepentingannya untuk kita dimaklumkan Dan di, memang tidak ada uh, apa halangan untuk you mohon ke mana-mana sekalipun you nak pergi untuk internship uh, cuma urusan dia adalah uh, antara PIC kalau you, you pergi tu lecturer you tahu ataupun lecturer tu yang recommend uh, jadi antara PIC dengan company company kena provide semua yang berkaitan dengan urusan visa jika diperlukan eh, jika diperlukan oleh embassy Uh, tapi jika embassy tak banyak songeh, uh, okay boleh you pergi. Alhamdulillah lah. Tapi kalau banyak songeh, uh, then you have to work with the company, request the company to help you with that. So memang tak ada isu, boleh je pergi ke mana saja yang you nak. Saya dah bagi contoh tadi kan. Okay, next. Okay, so boleh pergi ke mana-mana yang kita nak. Okay, so soalan terakhir daripada... Nurin Fakiha, uh, orang yang sama tadi. Can I still mm-hmm. graduate on time if I study abroad? Uh, boleh tak doktor? Tentu saja boleh kalau you dapat kredit transfer tu. Hmm, ini untuk kredit transfer lah yang, yang macam ni eh. Memang boleh sebab tu uh, again saya terpaksa jawab agak panjang lebar ya. Again tanggungjawab ini adalah tanggungjawab dah di pihak fakulti ataupun kampus atau penasihat you ataupun ketua ya yeah. uh, kena pastikan bahawa pelajar diberi kredit transfer tak kira lah berapa banyak kredit transfer remember di UiTM ni maksimum kredit yang you boleh bawa dalam satu semester kalau tak silap saya adalah antara 23 hingga 24 kredit ya yeah, 23 24 uh, kalau you pergi uh, exchange yang kredit yang dibenarkan transfer hanyalah contoh You boleh ambil tiga tiga kursus saja yang uh, apa tu yang fakulti you nampak tiga kursus ni je yang boleh diberi kredit transfer dan tiga kursus ni setiap satu tiga kredit contoh hanya sembilan kredit kan sembilan kredit padahal pada semester itu kawan-kawan you yang duduk di uh, Malaysia uh, di UiTM mereka ada lima belas kredit uh, tapi hanya dapat sembilan je so ada enam kredit lagi berhutang kan uh, berhutang tetapi Uh, apa ni you boleh bawakan uh, apa ni se- sebab uh, you bu- uh, UITM ni dia pengambilannya dua kali setahun dalam banyak fakulti lah uh, jadi boleh je kalau you tak ambil khusus yang yang enam kredit yang tertinggal tu uh, you boleh arrange kan supaya you boleh ambil next semester sebab as long as you punya uh, apa ni kredit per semester itu tidak melampaui 23 tu 
Kalau tak siap saya 23 lah 23 atau 24 uh, Dan you sanggup uh, Boleh je you boleh graduate on time uh, Tapi kalau kata you pergi ke exchange tu You boleh dapat kredit penuh uh, Fakulti you benarkan uh, Kalau ditawarkan 15 kredit 15 kredit tu you boleh dapat Ah uh, Lagi memanglah you Tak ada isu langsung kiranya Ya yeah, boleh dapat kredit transfer. Sebab itu saya nak ingatkan balik kepada kebanyakan ke, kepada semua. Ya yeah, sebab itu saya kata you kena plan very well. Kalau you dah uh, masuk semester akhir, the only way you can go is through research attachment sebab you ada FYP ataupun uh, internship lah. That's the only two. Ya yeah. but for the rest yang nak pergi untuk exchange for example. Ya yeah, you kena plan dari awal. Sebab you kena tahu kursus-kursus yang you ambil Boleh dapat kredit transfer ke tak You sanggup tak uh, Sebab ada juga student yang nak juga pergi Kami ada ya pelajar pergi Jepun uh, Dia tak peduli by hook or by crook Nak juga pergi <laughs> So fakulti dia uh, Tak boleh nak dapat matching uh, kredit ni Tak boleh nak dapat Nak, nak bagi matching kredit Tanya penyelitian ini tinggal satu kursus saja. Itu pun kursus tu akhirnya baru-baru ini saya dapat tahu kursus tu pun tak ditawarkan pada semester ini. Hanya ditawarkan pada semester hadapan. Tapi pelajar dah pergi Jepun. Uh, faham tak maksudnya? Uh, pelajar ini dia tak ambil kisah. Nak, dia, dan pelajar ini kata dia sanggup repeat. Sanggup repeat. So again, it is for you. You decide. Kalau you sanggup repeat uh, sebab you tak boleh nak ni ada. Uh, saya nak bagi tahu juga saya ada juga seorang pelajar Masya Allah rajinnya dia tapi buat online lah. Dia tak pergi fizikal buat online saja. Tapi dia enroll to the program. Okay what happen? Uh, dia dia tahu dia takkan dapat kredit transfer dia, dia tak akan dapat kredit transfer sebab bila saya bertanya dia kata tak dapat pun kredit transfer doktor. Dia kata Allah habis itu macam mana you ambil juga? Tak apa doktor saya ambil je. Dia ambil tiga kursus kot Uh, Jepun, eh, di Jepun secara online uh, uh, Ya yeah, betul Dan pada masa yang sama Dia mengikuti semua kursusnya di, di UITM ni Sebab dia tak pergi kan Dia duduk sini Tak ada satu pun yang ada drop Dia ambil Katalah dia ada enam kursus Semua enam kursus dia ambil termas Dan tambah lagi tiga kursus Ya tambah lagi tiga kursus rajinnya Saya pun tak tahu Saya tanya dia macam mana you manage Tapi sebab kebanyakan kelas dia adalah online Jadi dia boleh manage Tapi kalau katalah sekarang ni dah bermula fizikal Payahlah sebab kehadiran you uh, Dikira kan 80% walaupun on, uh, online hari tu pun dikira 80% Tapi you bolehlah switch uh, antara A dengan B tu uh, Ataupun you boleh dapatkan rakaman dan sebagainya I don't know I don't know how you guys did it But um, Uh, it's it's really how you manage yourself lah yeah, How you manage yourself So the choice is yours basically Tapi saya betul-betul berharap Plan it very well Talk with your uh, KPP yeah, Talk with your faculty Let them know your intention Work on, kalau boleh Work on the electives You yeah, work on the electives Much easier Ya, yeah, much easier uh, Itulah uh, nasihat saya Tapi kalau you berada uh, semester hujung-hujung tu A bit difficult lah Sebab kebanyakan elektif dia berlaku before sampai hujung Ya, yeah, jadi itulah nasihat saya kepada you Please plan very well Okay uh, Okay, I think that's uh, that's my answer Okay, so with that, uh, we are going to uh, close this Q&A session. Thank you so much for all the questions. And uh, if you have any questions or any more, maybe you can ask in the next session. Maybe if we could organize another one with Dr. Okay, um, we're getting close to the end of our time together. Uh, I believe we reached our purpose of the discussion before that. Um, doctor, any any uh, last words ke before uh, leaving us today? <laughs> any hope or any you know any advice you would like to recommend to us? Okay, uh, thank you, Auni. Uh, just now, I promise that I will give you the uh, link or the URL for you to go and check on AIMS, yeah, Asian. 
international mobility for students. Yeah, uh, I, I mentioned just now Simeo I had and so on. So perhaps what I will do because I see I don't know where that I can actually write that, but I think I will uh, share with you. I'll use your number to share and then you can share uh, that information with your friends because again, um, please make use of this AIMS uh, fund. Ya, tabung AIM ni, um, duitnya banyak, ya, taklah sampai berjuta, tapi duitnya banyak dan you boleh dapat sampai uh, 15,000. Ya, kalau, atau, sekejap eh, I think so. Japan and Korea sampai 15,000. Kalau you pergi ke Brunei, 10,000. Uh, kalau you pergi ke Indonesia, saya rasa dalam, Indonesia tak mahal lah. Maybe dalam 4,000, 5,000. I'm not sure. Yang tu saya tak ingat sangat. Tapi itulah saya kata, duit ada. Yeah, even tabung tu pun duit ada. Yeah, cuma saya punya uh, ni tadi, ingatkan you balik. Banyak pula cakap. Yeah. Uh, uh, beberapa tabung yang kita ada tu, um, kalau scholarship tu uh, rezeki you lah ya. Yeah? Uh, tetapi kalau yang tadi tabung tu, tabung dana mobility UITM tu uh, dia ada kategori ya yeah? B40 dengan non B40. Jadi mungkin kalau you parents you tak ada duit, uh, you akan ada dapat sikit sangat ya. Yeah? Tapi kalau yang AIMS tadi tu, uh, duit ni datang daripada kerajaan Malaysia. ya. Yeah? Uh, dia, dia bagi kat kita untuk uh, jadi um, sebab itu kita boleh bagi kepada pelajar dia punya ceiling amount tu ya yeah, uh, ceiling amount uh, in fact kalau ada lagi kes di mana uh, pelajar itu kena kuarantin contoh ya uh, ada kuarantin kita masukkan sekali dalam tu the kuarantin tu cost cut kuarantin ya yeah. uh, dan saya nak maklum juga last sekali uh, bahawa saya teringat Ya, yeah, memang ada certain certain country tu dia ada quarantine ya. Uh, sekarang ni masih lagi uh, semua country yang saya tengok tu uh, keperluan untuk imunisasi. Ya, yeah, your vaccination. So it's very important. They say that at least two vaccination. Kita kan ada sampai booster kan. Ambil lah seberapa banyak ini yang diberi percuma tu. Uh, tapi most countries request to at least for you to have two vaccination. Yeah, two vaccination, vaccinations. <laughs> okay, and in some countries, they need you to do another PCR test uh, before leaving the country. So, these are among the things that you have to remember uh, among the process, the things that you need to do uh, when you want to go. Please, please, again, last kali, yeah, uh, apply. Yeah, apply for exchange, apply for summer. Summer ni a bit difficult, a bit difficult sebabnya... Ha, you punya kata kerja tu kena betul-betul cun. Betul-betul uh, cun, betul-betul menunjukkan pencapaian GRU tu lah ya. Yeah. Global citizenship tu kena ni. Dan dan biasanya kena melibatkan office kami. Tapi kalau you pergi mohon untuk exchange, saya tak pernah nampak lagi ditolak. Saya tak pernah la nampak lagi, dengar lagi jika ada paperwork untuk program exchange ditolak. Kecuali of course kalau you minta pergi, I don't know, so far, tak ada eh. You boleh pergi ke mana sahaja asalkan ada uh, partnership dengan UITM. Itu je lah. Okay, saya nak mengucapkan uh, selamat maju jaya kepada semua pelajar. Um, juga um, uh, mengucapkan terima kasih kerana jemputan ini. Saya berharap saya telah memberi seberapa banyak uh, maklumat yang apa tu, yang berguna untuk semua pelajar uh, dan sekali lagi selamat maju jaya uh, insyaAllah kalau you all ada yang memohon ni uh, mungkin saya dapat tahu jugalah sebab saya adalah gatekeeper eh. <laughs> gatekeeper dan juga uh, apa data recorder ya, yeah, data saver, uh, storage ya yeah, dekat saya ok itu sahaja, terima kasih banyak-banyak uh, Uni uh, untuk sesi ini uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Ni uh, macam yang doktor cakap tadi, do apply for exchange program. Uh, you never know if it's meant to be yours, it will be yours and insyaallah you will be able to go. Uh, to sum up, I would like to thank our honorable speaker, uh, Dr. Rosana Muhammad Said. It is an honor to have you with us this morning. 
And uh, I would like to inform that the registration form for the certificate will be shown in the screen. Uh, please uh, register for the certificate of this program. Uh, if it's not possible uh, or you cannot access it through the screen, maybe you can uh, search the comment box. Uh, our committee will put up the link on our comment box. Then again, I thank all of our participants. It was a very knowledgeable session. Thanks to your participation. And we would love to hear your feedback regarding this program. You can comment in the chat box or you can just tell us directly uh, through our Instagram or any social media platform. Don't forget to subscribe uh, our or follow any of our uh, social media platform MPP UITM Kedah. Lastly, I representing our program's organizer today, uh, Student Representative Council MPP UITM Chong and Kedah. I would like to uh, humbly apologize if we have made any mistakes. We are very grateful for all of you, uh, to all of you for joining us today. With that, a virtual talk, opportunities to go abroad while studying in UITM ends now. A round of online applause to all of you. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Nobilahi topic wali daya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And you may leave now. Thank you. Doctor, ramai yang cakap thank you kan doktor dekat comment box.